Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to the Noyantif Youth Group. Today is Monday, the 12th of June, 2017. Um, as always, anybody got any questions or uh, issues, ideas, type them in the question box, we'll open the mic and we'll talk through them. Uh, and to that, uh, and to that uh, point, we'll start with David because apparently he's got some errors after uh, upgrading. So, David, if you open up the mic, hopefully you uh, you're there. Hi, David. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So you've got errors after upgrading. That's not good. Yeah, I thought I'd try that before the uh, <laughs> before the webinar. It looks like I'm getting them out of uh, property grid and and uh, report control when I try to compile my base. Right. Yeah. What are the particular? Do, should we have a look at your screen to to view that? Um, yeah, I can either. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. I was just switching over some of the. Uh, I had a couple left. I was going to ah, change it, over. It's, I, it's think, I, think I'm, I think I'm done. I think I'm done there. So. Uh, okay. Well, let's just make yeah, you a presenter so we can see the screen. Okay. Oh wow. Now that to me looks like it's um, uh, it's hopefully just a, an outdated file. Now, basically, um, have you? You've obviously you say you applied some updates of late. Um, right, I updated all the controls. Right. right so yeah, the calendar control, you know, chart went through, registered, installed all the updates, right. and then went into the template registry, you know, and checked to make sure all the versions matched up. That looked good, and then this particular the base guy he the only really one he has in here is the docking. Yep, telling it to it. So switched it to this version, and then what's your what's your the, license? Yeah, the very yeah. last tab, you know, is uh, is I checked yeah, I turned it to the latest version. Yeah. Okay, um, now you obviously downloaded the what down what. What products did you download? Uh, pretty much all of them. <laughs> right. Well, uh, yeah. The reason I ask, I better, I better make uh, quickly make sure. But it looks like basically we have a, a common class, NYS common, and then we have, and that includes um, some library functions, the common class, and uh, the equates. Now, every time a new product, a new version comes out, so let's say property grid's gone from 359 to 360 right. then of course that would be rebuilt but as a safeguard because all the products do share the common class the installers for all of the other products do get um, rebuilt just in case you you know download one of those you don't want to be installing an old file however <laughs> that's the idea and I can check the, the, the content in a minute looks to me as though an old installer has been applied after a new installer. Now the versions will still stay the same. Let's say hypothetically you've just taken the property grid, like say 359 to 360, but you'd reinstall the report control afterwards. Now the report control, uh, if you had a version 3.5 installer and the current version was 3.5, I would still encourage you to go and download the latest 350 because it would have the latest common class in. Yeah, now these are the these are the products, and this is the installation order. Okay. And all of them have the latest. You know, so I you know, go into one of them. It has. Let me just um, check on my system here. Okay. Actually, it's not that one. Just one second. Okay, so that's your um, the calendar. Right. Yeah, the calendar is uh, three point six. Yep. And Chart Pro is 3.57. Ah, but what's the date and time of that install of the calendar, sorry? Of the calendar? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, now here's the thing. And it's, it's um, I'm open to ideas um, if anyone wants to, um, you know, help me out, <laughs> so to speak. But as I say, the latest calendar there, 3.6, is, you've got it on the 20th of February, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is great. Now, 
the latest version I've got is also 3.6. Uh, yeah, for, from an installer point of view. But the date and time of my installer, it was rebuilt on the 30th of May. And the reason for that is the version hasn't changed. It's still 3.6, but the common class that is included in that installer was changed for so the equates in the common class so if you're ever going to install and this is true for everybody and uh, and so on if you're ever going to install any updates don't use your stored copies always re-download the very latest so even though you've got 3.6 downloaded re-download 3.6 because it will have a different common class in in reality okay. what i should really do is um build the base class as a, a supplement installer so you have that um, separate and then the calendar only ever contains the calendar the property grid only ever contains the property grid and so on and so forth um, that's one oh, idea yeah. I have I, yeah it's one idea I have toyed with but it's really I don't know <laughs> it's it's for you guys I don't really want to go um, um, well we got to do it sometime you know, so <laughs> <Imagine, laughs> what, what I could also do is only install live newer so change my installers to only put the common common files in if they're newer than the ones what are currently there and that would get us around the problem i got you yeah, yeah. that might so imagine there you've you've applied whichever was the last i mean it's a property grid so you've applied property grid much newer it's got the latest common and the lib so they they've all been applied then you install whichever one afterwards um, we could. I, I will actually change them. In fact, I can't believe it's never come to me before now. So I'll change the. I think that's the thing. Yeah, the date here is for the like the property grid is six five. Yeah. So yes, you'll have done is. that, but chances are you'll have installed one of the other <clears> after it, which would have put the old libraries back in again. The easiest thing there, okay. obviously, we don't want to do it while you because you'll type your number in, is just reinstall either one of the property grid or the report control, whichever is the newest of those two. Reinstall that, and you'll be good to go. Oh, I got you. Not yeah. not both of them, just one of them. No, just whichever's the newest of them two. So, okay. that's Thanks for probably fifth. Nine twenty nine. And fifth. Nine twenty eight. So. <laughs> <The> report <laughs> controls got a minute later, so I guess he wins. <laughs> so we've got a winner. Oh yes. Um, so obviously we'll switch screens so nobody can see. You know we don't. But you don't have to reinstall everything. But all we're doing is just we're going to reinstall the uh, the report control which will ultimately put in your brand the, the newer version of the common class and the library and then okay you'll be good because like i said those files there's, there's common class equates uh libraries and the terms and conditions which are just kind of standard um are there in every one of the installers so i'll change the installers to um to take effect that only install them when they're newer and you should be uh, that should cover that scenario so apologies for that okay yeah, no problem do you want to try that while we're on and make sure we're not left you uh, yeah. in, in no man's land so to speak shall i take a second here to okay okay i'm just going install. to make a quick note while i'm doing this um change installers Do you know, I, I, now I've just said install live new, I can't believe I've never actually came up with that in the past. That's um, that's kind of obvious. So, <laughs> sorry about that, kicking myself. That's now. a very good one. Yeah, but yeah, until you think about it. <laughs> you get too engrossed in the actual work that you actually miss the yeah. obvious, so to speak. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll let that real quick. Yep, oh, well, let's, let's just wait and make sure you have got that. Okay, we're compiling now. It's a big, bigger base than I thought. <laughs> Trying to think what, um, yeah, because oh. the common class is becoming more and more important, which it, which it has done um, for quite a while now. Then. Uh, then yeah, it's uh, all of the products where, wherever possible. I try to put it in the common class because the methods become handy for for all of them. 
<clears throat> yeah, that looks like I did it. Oh, very good. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, we'll leave the mic open. You um, chime in whenever you need to, whenever yeah. you want to. <laughs> okay. I'll try not to make too much noise over here. <laughs> no problem. Uh, <laughs> I know Alejandro's got a question, but I also know via the email that uh, David had a question, uh, David Watson. So Alejandro will be with you very shortly, uh, but we'll just open up David, because I know we had a question. So David, David, you open? Hi there, Andy. Hi, how are you doing? Yes, good, thanks. Good, good. good. And I know you asked a question on the spider. Is that one? Sorry, you're referring to my question about the, the, the slider that I showed you. Is it? That's right, the track bar. Yes, a, a new one coming over the weekend. Um, yep. it's just things are so busy at the moment, which is, you can't complain about. It's always good, yep. but um, yeah, you end up with your uh, your mind all over the place. Yeah. Okay. So the question was regarding uh, it was to do with capabilities of the report control, correct? And mainly the track bar type interface. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's just one be a second. Um, okay. So we'll just open up the example. Okay. Now while we're just compiling that, uh, as we mentioned in the in the past, uh, the report control is essentially a, a list, a list box, and we know we can yes, how it can be yes. uh, used and, and loaded, and we've covered that uh, and so on. Um, but you can actually have it in uh, basically in, in, a, in a few different flavors. One is a standard list with all its grouping capability. I don't know if you've looked at the grouping, but that's really powerful. The easiest example. Oh, yeah, the easiest example of that is, is the likes of um, Outlook, how it uh, groups your emails. That's the report control right, grouping. Yeah. So yeah. we can do the icon view, which we mentioned, but it also supports this type of control, which is a, a track bar view. Yeah, now, this is and, exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah now this uh, basically, at the heart of it is still a report control. So we've got our columns of which you can still do your grouping for the rows and the column indicators, as you would expect, sort the data, uh, move them around, field picker compatible. You've got the whole power of the report control here. Yeah. But then one of the options you get on there is to say put it into track bar view, which creates you one big column at the end. I'm, I'm not going to do it justice, to be fair, but imagine it as one big column which is the the track bar and then each row as well as giving you one particular uh, basically your know, one row identifying something you can then um uh, add multiple blocks and these markers no i think they're called markers right. yeah i think i think they're called markers so let me yes. check yes I, I know it's when i was looking at the demo that you can get hold of those and pull them around a little bit yeah yeah now one of the things you can do uh, there's methods uh, to support all of this, and the example app um, demonstrates a, a bit of this. But it's, uh, it, it's the, the, the purpose of the example app is to show you what you can do. It doesn't really do it justice in showing you the full capabilities and, and so on and so forth. It's just to show you what, basically what you can do. So each yes. block, you can have multiple blocks, obviously. You can then move them around, um, resize them. So yes, can, yes, I found that out and so on and you can change the properties so we can say no that particular block i want to lock so the user mm -hmm. that's it they've accepted it or maybe it's um it's a booking and you've taken the deposit and so on and so forth that's setting stone that's that's not going anywhere yes. so that's your, your earliest that anything can be butted up against uh, or you can block a whole row so we can say okay well that that person is booked for the day now no more and that's you know that type of thing i yeah. use this for um scheduling yes. this combined with the calendar uh, and i think i have got an example actually which i'll try and show this combined with the calendar really is quite powerful 
uh, quite um, quite quite happy with it. Um, so yeah, so uh, and we'll just toggle that back on again and toggle that one block back on. So you can see the the properties that are stored down to the block level and so on. Right. Yes. I just would you actually move the blocks from one line to another as well. If you want them to, remember all these properties are completely down to what, how you want it to work. It right, gives yes. you so much power, but equally, it might scare some people and go, "Oh, if my users, you know, if they dragged that from there to there, all hell would break loose on a production line. I could never allow that." Well, mm -hmm. it's down to your, it's down to your own restrictions. If you don't want them to do yes, that, yeah. then impose the limits and stop them. And right, so, yeah. Um, the scale. Now that's a numeric scale, but the scale is completely configurable by itself. So what I mean right. by that is that's just a number. I think I put one in a date. Wow, you can see that's a, quite close together. So let's just bring that yep. down a little. So there's dates. And did I put it? No, I didn't. I was going to say on others I do them on a time. Um, probably got a, an example here. Now hopefully they don't mind it with a one of the uh, one of the clients uh, did uh, some work for them. Let me just take a, a quick look. In fact, now we'll do it a, a different way. Just one second. Hmm. This was a um, uh, Greg. He's usually one of our attendees, actually, and I think he had a question today. <laughs> but um, this was basically an application that he was working on. Uh, I was helping him with it. And if we can find the data, and the idea was, from a scheduling point of view, you can see his particular dates and. Um, he has his one block per day, but basically showing you who's covering what work and then letting you drag over and drop them accordingly. Oh, <laughs> probably showed the wrong thing there. Yeah, employees have got none. Okay. Show the data, but you get the idea. So we'll pull that onto a yep. tractor unit there and we'll, you know, so on. So that was, uh, I forget what the data is on this, I really do. Um, so that was an example. Weren't the one I was going to weren't the one I, best one I was thinking of actually there was, there was better um so back to the example so the scale can be any scale you like and yeah. you just intercept it via an embed point so you basically give it um, a start and an end and basically as that's going to be painted it will call an embed point and it's up to you to set it accordingly so for the right. for the date one We can see on the track view, we said what the uh, time limit is. So I said basically 60 days ago and 60 days in the future is our yeah. overall scale. Of course, these could be variables and they can, there's a method yeah. call to go and change them dynamically. Okay. And when it goes to paint, it's just a matter of intercepting the paint timeline label and setting it accordingly. So it receives a position, and I'm just going to say divisible, basically module seven. I just want the label to print every day. Okay, yes. Otherwise, I don't want it to print anything. And these are passed by address. So by setting that to blank, it stops the label from coming out. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to think what your other question was. Well, what was the, the thing you tried to achieve in the in the song? The like slide that you got at the top. If you wanted this numeric scale one, that's a, that's a good one, yeah. Okay. And if you pull the little marker along the top there, not the one that you're on now, the, the oh yes, this, this one. one that's got, yeah, that, that one, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if there's a way to detect that change and uh, get an event okay. that fires as, you, as you're dragging that. Okay, okay. I think you can actually add multiple markers. You know, I've just put one on there as an example, right. but you can, I think you can put multiple on there. Now let's just check that question for you. So here's our um, code jock uh, OTX opened up. We'll have a quick look yeah. at the track. 
What I'd really like to do with that one actually is two things. One is to be able to drag it the way you just did uh -huh. and get an event fired so that I can make something else update depending on the position along that timeline along the top, but also have another thing where like a video is playing and the timeline is running along, effectively using it like a, like a scrub line on a video editor. I've got you. Yeah. So if you press play, um, you see that. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? That's it, exactly. You, um, you touch upon one of the other products, which um, we're announcing the media wrapper to uh, to do video editing, uh, but that's, that's a side point. But that, that would also be a very good control for you. Okay, we'll have to tell me more about that. That <laughs> might actually be very, very useful to me. Yeah, I was just thinking when uh, we're talking about this, but of course, um, well, let's answer the question on that. But yes, um, yeah, yeah. We, always, we already have a, a media wrapper, but mainly for players. But the one of the players it supports, because the idea is, oh, we'll jump to it in a minute. We're waffling on. Let's answer your question. Can we trap the media, uh, the marker changed? Yeah. So, and it returns us uh, the marker itself. So I'm just going to pull that out of the way. Uh -huh. And just going to create a variable to intercept that uh, that that point. Now, if this if we need to expand the class to give um, some you know uh, embed points for this to make it easier to input to implement, happy to uh -huh. do that. That's the whole point of holding okay. you know, holding the webinars. Uh, happy right. to do that. So, but for now, we'll do it the um, the, the 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 crude way, if you will. So, right. so marker. Position. Uh, we'll probably bring back along for now. Okay. And I'm going to put that on the screen rather than do a message because in a callback, it's it's really bad to put a, a message in a callback function. You know, yeah, yeah. No, if you, if you put something on screen that's showing me the the value of that, then I, I'm, that's exactly what I'm looking for, really, because it proves the point it can be done and. Uh, that I could take that value and do whatever I want to do with it. Yeah. Okay, so mark a pause. And we want to... Now, this will probably be how I... This, along these lines will be how I actually implement it in the class. So I would create a, some derived methods for you, to be honest. Uh -huh. Make sure we've got none now. I've got to delete all markers, but that's just a, a local... Uh, a local code. LV marker position, no, no, okay. So straight down to the raw level event funk. to listen for the event uh, marker changed. Now just so I know that that is the, the, the proper event, I'm just going to do a uh, marker pause to LV marker pause plus one. Just want to see it. Okay. That's not the position. I just want to see that we are listening to the correct event. Oh, did I do it on the date one? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, okay. So, yeah, there's brilliant. So that's getting us. Oh, yeah. that, that's exactly what I was looking for, yes. Yep. So now that does tell us that it gives you a track marker. So the, we, we would get the value of that dot position and caption you can get to as well, which was that today. So we could change it if I wanted. If I will be flash, we'll, we'll actually do that. Um. So it would be just on. Um, 
It would be that, but it would be so it would be the first parameter dot position. So basically, what we're doing there to bring this back into position is the first parameter that that uh, the thing passed back was a track marker, and we're going to get mm -hmm. the, that as a collection, and we're going to get the dot position of that. Like I said, this okay. this will be wrapped. You'll have a nice embed point saying track marker moved, and it'll just pass you the position as um, a parameter. So okay, nice and nice and simple for you. you what you see here is a very rough and ready raw code. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking if we if we said that position was less than today, I'll do a case of no I was correct change its uh, caption depending oh. on its position. Understood, yes. Well, purposes of the um, video, we might as well. <laughs> of course, what I should have really done is, is put that into a, a temporary variable rather than keep querying it. Not the end of the world. Yeah, no, I understand what you're doing, though. in the event we are going to change the position on the screen so we can see that and then I'm just going to change the caption of the actual marker to say if it's less than today we're going to put it as historical if it is today we're going to put it to today otherwise it's, well, it's got to be the future unless anybody knows of a, a third alternative <laughs> hmm. I thought we had a fourth, fourth alternative so let's just bring our scale so we can see let's pull ourselves there and there's today and there's our caption uh -huh. So there's our date changing, and we can see it's historical, today, future. Okay, very clever. My key, that is the example, you know. <laughs> um, so, and yes, if we, let's just display that in a, a, a Clarion date picture for the position. So there we go. Now, of course, if that was numeric, it'd be a numeric value. If you put it as time, it's yes. time. It's whatever scale you want it to be. Okay. Uh, so there was so that. the opposite of that? So Would you be able to set the position of that of marker? Course. Of course. Uh, we need its property. Now, of course, in the callback, it's telling us which one's changed, but you can have multiple uh, markers. So I right. need to know how to get to that. What have we stored? Get marker object. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. In the template, I have said track view uh, marker, and I've called it. Remember, all of our entities in our products have the, an ID. They're nothing to do right. with CodeJock. They know nothing of it. It's mainly to do with us. So rather than me passing an object, a raw object number to you, which means pointless and nothing and change it every time you initialize. You work with a nice ID and I, the, the back end keeps track of the things for you. I've got you, yes. Yep. And that's the same approach uh, uh, of all our products. So okay. I'm just going to see if we've got a set marker property. We've got delete marker and add marker because they can be added on the fly. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything about setting the market properties, so we do need to do that. So 
RC, I need to add set marker properly, property. Very simple to do. Yeah. Let's just go and do that anyway. So it's cold today. So if you type in in this, we'll change the color, we'll change marker color. So it'll be the report control. Is it no track bar? What's it called? Report control, okay. Dot set property. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got a thing, so I'm going to have to do uh, report control dot get marker object because I need the object for the yep. today because you can have multiple. So that one called today. So get the object, and I'm going to set its um dot position the last thing i'll set you to is lv marker so basically set a property the property we're setting is the marker dot position and we're going to set it to whatever you typed in okay not sure it'll need a repaint between the two but we can take a quick look so i've just really change our default shunter quite uh, I think so there's today we pull that there I can see today so if I change that to last week let's say oh no yeah we changed to the fifth and if I change that that's to that's exactly what I need to do now in theory uh, it's not mm -hmm. changing the caption because it's not seeing the event basically what we mm -hmm. should really do maybe a repaint but to be fair, if you're changing the position manually and you were changing the caption, then it would be only fair to ask you to change the caption as well, seeing as you are the one who's yes, changing yes. it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the answer to your questions were yes on both counts. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, two down, one to go. Uh, well, it's Alejandro next, which he always throws as a great ball. Quickly before you go, Andy, can yeah. I ask one other quick question? Yes. Um, you mentioned before that you had put um, external programs into the docking panels. Yes, that's correct. And is there anything you can do with those programs? Is it really just the displays painting on top of the docking panel, or do you have some sort of access to the program from there? No. I mean, you've got a handle. So if you've got, yeah. you must have the handle because you, in the first place, have. Um, uh, docked it via its handle right. so you must have its handle how, how would I get a handle to do that um, the let me have a quick look for you I think the class does include uh, some method calls for you to do that just one second um, do, 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 do. how about this I'm just on the other screen we'll bring that into play actually Oh. Attached to no. Get pain control no. No chances are it could be in the common class then. This is the thing I was mentioning earlier. The more anything useful, I'll always put into the common class because it just comes in handy. Uh, it could be that get client handle. No, no, it wouldn't be. It'd be get window handle, and you pass it a title. So for here, if you passed it a title of text pad, it would find the first window which started text pad, and it would get the hand, return you the handle within Windows. It's an API call. If you had two text pads open, it would bring you mm -hmm. the first. If you had, a, uh, if you said get me the first one which is text pad dash c colon dash dash clarion, then it would bring you the nearest you can find. Basically, the more characters you give it. The, the better it will find. The more likelihood it is of finding the correct one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So that's um, so because it's common. That's against all the products. Uh, but you can send messages to that as well. The common class does have 
uh, send message built into it. Okay. I think it's under the MDI actually. I soon tell you. Yeah, send message. So it does have the uh, the use of it. Oh, we use it for the co copy and paste and so on. So basically, it does have um, sending messages. You can always just add a um, a very simple method call to do the raw send message for you. But that's the only way you'd be able to truly talk to it. You'd have its handle because you need it to okay. knock it, and then you'd have to pass whatever Windows messages to it, but then it'd be up to, you'd have to know the interface of you, that particular product. So, I mean, all Windows, are, all famous last words, the majority of Windows applications will listen to a message say to close down, that type of thing. So if Windows right. is shutting down, it will listen and act accordingly, that type of thing. I use it in my applications. I have a, a starter application, which does various checks and so on and so forth before starting the main app. If you try and call the main app and it hasn't, been started up correctly, it shuts itself down and tells you accordingly. The reason to do that is, um, like I say, it's to do with SQL and so on. I just want to make sure things are running before they try and get into the app and see a load of, you know, rubbish messages, uh, things yeah, not working. Yeah. Uh, so the way I do that is the starter app starts up, finds everything's okay, and then starts the main app accordingly. The main app then shuts down the starter app via a, a, a send message. You know, so perfectly yeah. fine. It's been running that way for must be six years now, so there's no problems in anything like that. So that that would be a way that you could talk to it, but it would be down to, however, the app, what what it's expecting, and what you know, what parameters it requires and expects. There's no only you'd know that with whichever app you're choosing. Right. Yes. Yes. But the mechanism okay. is in there in the in all the products. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's great. No problem. Okie dokie. So next, Alejandro. Hi, how are you doing? Are you there? Oh, you are? You're very low. Hi, Alejandro. Alejandro, can you hear us? Can you hear me there? Oh. Yes, that's better. Yes. Uh, wait, wait, I will up my volume. Okay. I have a, a couple of questions about a report control. Can you open the example in this, in the grouping? Okay, yep. Okay. I need a uh, first I need to change the color of the uh, group okay where say receive it historical I need to change the color and the other things is I need to open the window and the all the group will be contracted okay so let me get that. yep so so you want that group to be contracted is that on all the rows or just the historical? Yes. No, no, all the rows I want to be contracted when what? I open the window. Okay, so what about the last four weeks? You would want that? You want all of them to be contracted? Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't see a problem in that. Oh, or do I? Hmm. <laughs> can always trust you to uh, set a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just take a, a look at what we've got at our disposal already. So the report control. We don't want to contract all rows. I have much delay with the screen. Oh, okay. So I was just thinking. Basically, we would, we would want to go through the rows object, and you want yes. it to open. So, like here, we can see Bruce Banner has got one group. 
the historical is the next group, and then you've got the actual raw data. So you've actually got two groups. Exactly. Okay. And of course, that could be grouped by something else. So let's just say uh, by size. So now we have got three groups. We've got that group and that group and that group. You want mm -hmm. that to be contracted, that to be contracted, but that not to be contracted. Correct? Exactly. Okay. Let's have a go at that to start with. What we're just doing that example is to make it open um, in that manner. So let's just let's just see this. Um, so we will have uh, which column was it? Size. So we'll have size on there as well, just to show for completeness. Mm -hmm. So in the grouping, and there we go. Three groups, one record. So as I covered a few weeks ago, you've got, technically you've got a record. We've got one record there. We've got one record here. But we want to interrogate, not the records object, we want to interrogate the roles object because when it's painted, each one of these is a role. So that group is a role, that's a group is a role, that group is a role, that record is a role so now we're four rows in that doesn't belong to a record neither does that or that but that one does so there's a difference between the roles and the records okay mm -hmm. we're going to interrogate the roles object and we're going to look at the contract state but we're going to want to try and interrogate uh, the level so for example we could put some code in now i'm going to put it in the init complete which means it's fully initialized, mm -hmm. it's got everything it wants. And this is true, for, again, for all the products, this, this approach. Um, um, X ash equals, and let's just pull this over here. So do that, pinch, pinch some code. So we're going to go through. And we're going to say, go through the roles object, go to the count. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to go backwards through it. And if it's expanded, contract it. Now, this will do all of them, which isn't quite what you're after. And you'll, so, but it'll be a starting point. Mm -hmm. So by putting that in um, the init complete, now when we open, oh, that's not quite as expected. Uh, that's 16 point odd. <laughs> Just one second, let me change this example. If anyone remembers their, their code doc history, uh, 16 had a contract all um, issue. It's fixed now in the latest ones. But uh, but yeah, what we're seeing there is um, an actual a leftover of uh, an actual code doc bug. Nothing to do with the class. Just one second. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll go on to oh, 17, but I will have to put my license in, so I'll do that off screen. I just want to check the contract. Yep. And I think it might just be the priority that I've just put that code in. Let's just put that a little later.
That's for me. I would have expected that to come up as um, contracted. Okay, it's how this is being loaded. Right, okay, ignore that. Normally, that is definitely the best place to put it. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to put it back in there. Uh, mm -hmm. This happens to be, uh, have some data loaded afterwards. So that's what's throwing it. Um, it's just a bad example. So let me just move the loading of the test data to that same embed point. Yeah, didn't actually have any data to do. So, right, load the data, which is just, this is a, a standard manually loaded one, so. <clears throat> okay. 65 rows and they're all contracted. Perfect. So that Let code... me see, wait, wait, please. Oh, sorry, yes. My screen is <laughs> yes, too sorry, slow. Say, yeah, so uh, tell me when you see the total on the, on the display. Wait. Right, it's 65 rows. <laughs> okay. And uh, when I press OK, they're all contracted. Yes. Okay. Now, you don't want that. You now, want it to be like that. Yes, but wait. Please uh, expand just one row. Okay, excellent. That is I want. Hmm? Are you want? Excellent. Sorry, what? How do you want it to open then? Did you want it to open like that, or like like that? No, no. In this way is a, a good form for me. So. At the first that you, uh, you did, not this one. Do you understand, or you ask me another things? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So, how do you, do you want it to open like that, with all the top levels open, or do you want it to open? Hello. Top? Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, Alejandro, Alejandro, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? And so I was wanting um, to go back uh, and look at that webinar. Uh, can you hear me? I did do it. 
There you are. Yeah. Sorry about that. I have to clue what happened. Uh, I, I obviously I weren't there, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so the question was. I was. I, I know, but while you were gone, I was answering your question. <laughs> oh, so, oh. Um, it was about the Andy. Do you remember when we did the um, oh the text messaging, and I showed how we do how I did it in the report control? Yes, yes. Do you remember what webinar that was? Oh. I'm sure we posted it up. It's okay. I'll go through and find it, uh, John. I just wanted to know that it was actually there uh, because I want to, I want to review that and have a look at that. It so it's, it's okay. I'll, I'll find it by myself rather than take up your time. John, John did it on the Friday webinar, but then you also did it on one of ours, I think, the following Monday. Uh, right. Uh, so okay. it will be on the uh, – if you go to um, – obviously, if you go to uh, Chloe and Live Wiki, you'll get it on there. If you go to YouTube and search for Niantis, you'll get it on there. But I would say it's probably a couple of months ago, something like that. I think so. That okay. sounds right. I'll, I'll go back through and find it. Uh, I, I just took the opportunity while you were gone, Andy, to, to quickly jump in and ask John the question. <laughs> no so, problem. I'll, 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 get, I'll get back out of the way now. Thank you. I don't you. know where I went, but I was. Uh, I, I, I went somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 So, so sorry. Yeah. Um, I might have misunderstood. I thought you wanted it to open with all of the first rows expanded, but none of the child rows of that. So. Uh, like you see it on the screen there. Is that not correct? No, this is I want uh, click in the first row and open the first child. Right. This is I want. Okay. So the another and the another things is I want to change the color of this row. Yes. Well, we have to do one thing, uh, one thing at a time. So we've got. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So you can see here we're going to go through the rows object we're going to go backwards and this is just setting the expanded um to false now we want to do that under condition so i'm just going to have a look if there's a condition that we can see so we're going to go through the report rows there's our rows the row item itself which will return us a, a particular row and then we can see here that one of the options we're going to do is change the expanded. We need to know its, um, its, its level, if you will. And you've got row tree level. So let's nice. just nice. Let's say that. So if that is true, and you can see what I'm going to do here. And it's greater than one. So I would say... Row, oops, row tree level. So if it's expanded and the level is greater than one, then we're going to contract it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we go on to that. Mm. That's interesting because it's just decided to put them all out. Hmm. Let's take a quick look at what it says about. I would have expected it to be rotary ah rotary level for yes. virtual mode. Hmm. Okay, that's not good. Okay, that's a shame. Doesn't look like that's going to work for us. That's not a problem. There's other ways. Let's interrogate the parent row. So I'm going to have to end up putting a bit of debug in this and we'll just break it, but it'll be, uh, it'll give us what we're after.
No, it's okay. I was just trying to think of something, uh, but it won't work. Just going to watch for this one either equal in itself or blank. So it's going to go back. So that. 96 and a blank 80 80 yeah so the blanks look good But the other, the other um, property we're looking at with the thing called virtual mode only works for virtual mode. Oh, crikey. Left the message in. Okay. That will get you what you're after. Let me see, please. Okay. Excellent. Okay, let me send you that code um, for the purpose of recording. Let's put it in a quick recap. Um, we don't need that tot. I just did it so we could message out the rows. So I'm going to loop through, I'm going to loop backwards, and I'm going to go through, and I'm going to go from the total number of rows we've got. Remember, these are rows, not records, because of the grouping. I'm going to go through the rows. Mm -hmm backwards and we're going to say if the row is the, that, we're, that we're looping through is it if it's expanded and its parent is blank i.e it's the top level sorry and its parent is not equal to blank so it's not the top level then we're going to change one of the properties the expanded which we've interrogated will then set to false which will contract it and that's okay. it i'll put that code in the skype for you um, yes, please. So you've got that ready to go. Make sure I've got the right hour handle because believe it or not, I've got a, got, got a couple. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now you wanted to do the colour. The colour, we'll have a look, but that could be, you want to do the colour under condition, is that correct? Yes. And the colour of, of which colour? Any color, green. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, so, who, what, what, what's the condition? Sorry, I, that was my fault. Is it, the, <laughs> is it the condition of the uh, that group? The first, the, the first group. The first level. Change the first level of the group. Okay, sorry. so going with that, what we were looking at before. So back to our row object. We've got the expanded. you don't have a color attribute so you're going to struggle we have a for a uh, for a group for a color i think in group we could look at the groups um but you look at it from a row point of view oh you've got it you've got whether it's a group row mm -hmm. yeah you see you, obviously we're our, our hands are tied to what properties are physically available to us. Now we could go through our groups, but it would be. Mm, we could have a look. For group row. Okay. That has a caption. No, no, you don't have the color. The only thing you would have is a paint object, but it wouldn't paint it for the just first the first row of the group. It would change it for all of the the the, the, the grouping colors. So you, you're not going to be able to achieve what mm -hmm. you're after there. Mm -hmm. So. Um... 
what is the alternative or the workaround to do that? Um, I don't think you're going to get one. What do you think? The, the, you haven't got that property open to you. The overall paint manager, so if we go through here and have a look at what we've got from a group. So you've got a group four colour, as you say. You've got various group shade back mm -hmm. colour, but these are for the overall control. They're not just um, one particular level. They're not at row level, these. These are control level. So if we were to change the, uh, the group four colour, that would change all groups four colour. Can you can you make a test, please, to show me with the growth for for color, and the shape back color? Yep, please. Well, I think you've got a. I think you've got a method for it. So, yeah, if we do, um, yep, in there, we'll do it. After we've loaded the data, and we'll do a set, a set group set group four color. I thought we had a set group back color actually. We'll do the four color set group. Now this four. is. I'm going to do it red. So now you can see, you can see it. there's your four colour. That's a, the, the, the yeah the four colour, um, but yes. you're not going to be able to do it at row level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. No problem. Go. This is very well for me right now. Hmm? Okay. Another, you can I up. make another question? Uh, quickly, because we've got a couple from Pete. So, but yes, fire away. Yep. I am using the tax panel, and when I put hide control when lose focus, it doesn't happen. But I uh, use the hide and show from the common func. Hide control. Oh, yes. yes, I remember that. Crikey. That's a, that was a long time ago. Right, let me have a look. I've not used that for a long time. Okay, just quickly then, so let's have a look. We'll just compile this up. So where the option you use, hide when lose focus, is that correct? Exactly, that's correct. Um, right, I can't actually remember the setting, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's a very old setting, that. Where is it? I just don't want to lose focus. Wow. Let me take a look. Um, just having a look at what that setting is. Sorry, it won't be a second. Yes, yes. Hi, Taft panel. Okay, so bringing that into focus, that sets a property called hide task panel, which of course you can 
take charge of. So, according to this, it's on the take window event. On the game focus, it should hide, and on the lose, it should be set to true. Yes, doesn't work. I use the hide in the Noyantis common func, mm -hmm. the common class, sorry. Yeah. And this works fine. Okay, so what we're saying is, um, if it equals true, then self dot hide. Yes. And that would be something like self dot show. Correct. Yes. Yes. I don't put in the class. I put in the code, the task panel. Okay, so we've got that. If I click there, it's hide, come back, shows. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I've not used that in such a long time. That looks like it must have been uh, broken at some point, but uh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll put, make sure that goes into the next fix. <laughs> yes. So, but that that will be, let's just, we'll do that now before we forget. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this, guys. Won't be a second. I don't lose focus corrected. Thank you very much for that. Sorry about that. <laughs> so the, if you wanted to fix yours in the same manner, it would be that the basically originally when that was that really is old code, that um we never had the hide and show in the common class. So if we go to the mm -hmm. common class now, you can see there's uh, there's other things in there being taken into account, the thread switching and so on and so forth, and this property to do whether it's hidden or not. So that's why. Yes. So, so yes. Uh, so that's a much better alternative. Okay, uh, so we've got a couple of questions off Pete. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, by the way. Thank you, Wendy. No, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, Right, what are we on? Oh, five to six. So, Pete, Pete, you're still here. You've been very patient. Let's open the mic. Uh, do you have a microphone? Pete? No? Okay. Well, what we've got here then is we've got, um, have this question. My apps compile fine. They run, but close within one second, but have to leave. Oh, uh, but have to leave. Have to fetch my daughter. Okay. Okay, so he's asking basically what he's saying is his applications are compiling, they start, but he's saying the close will be in one second. Okay. Um, let's change one of these, the, the one I was working on before, to Reg3Com. Because this sounds, uh, I'm going to take a, a guess that he's using Reg3Com. So I'll go to the example app. Andy, I saw this mentioned on the Clarion Live chat. 
And I'm certain that he did actually see on there that he was using red Redcon. I vaguely remember something on this, to be fair, but I think it was uh, I think it was Saturday night actually when he was saying something like, "Could have been." I think I was outside at the time, to be honest. I was on my phone. <laughs> um, right, let's just take a, a quick look um, onto here. Now I know I've got my license in there, so we'll just go to the register and I'll use the red Recon current directory. We have to make sure. So basically, here's there's a couple of pitfalls. The Rage Recom is by far one of the best things Soft Velocity have added for, from my point of view, for Clarion. Um, but a couple of pitfalls which, <laughs> they just once you're aware of them, you'll never really make the mistake again. But it's just things to watch out for. The first is, um, when you compile, it'll generate the manifest. So we'll go to, there's our folder. We can see, obviously, there'll be things being generated. We'll put it in date, time, order. So there's things coming through. Our manifest has just been created, which is brilliant. And uh, your, your screen is updating very, very slowly, so we're not seeing some of the things that you're talking about. Ah, OK. Right, so on the screen at the moment, we've got Clarion and we've got the folder. Yes, that's what, that's what we're seeing. Brilliant, OK. So that, that this file here, the manifest file, for the report control has just been generated and if we were to take a quick look at that it's a typical manifest file that's good its version has to match the version uh, that you are using now of course if it's just generated it which it should do um there's no problem if you copy in an old one so if your application is shipped with a, a manifest that states 17.1 and you're now switching to 17.3 and you've not shipped the new manifest file that would stop your application from working so that's one scenario the other scenario here is if i run that oh i must have the control in the working folder because i didn't expect that to run so let me have a quick look uh, where is the folder in question Uh, do you know what? It's because I've got it. I think it's because I've got it registered. I wouldn't expect that to run because the control isn't present, but it's probably because I've got it registered as well. So one thing you must also ensure is the control itself, matching version, of course, is in the folder. So let's just run that. Of course, we fire up. Ah, sorry, of course, the application would have run before. Um, it weren't initializing at that point. But if it wasn't in the folder, let me close that, come back to our folder. We run that. Yeah, we can. It can't initialize because the actual control isn't present. So, and I've got error reporting turned on there. If I didn't have that turned on, uh, so we'll just go over our simple. Then we wouldn't actually see any message. Now imagine you're at this, the control is on your application frame, like a command bar, then you wouldn't see anything for your, your app. I might even stop it from working um, on the app frame, but you definitely wouldn't get an initialization. So your control has to be in the working folder. Your manifest has to be there for it. And the other thing which you've got to watch is because we've just generated our app, we've got the control been generated, the manifest been generated for the control. Here it is, matching 17.3, perfect. And that the application's manifest also got updated to include these extra informations, the, 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 the extra dependencies, the pointing to the extreme uh, report control, which is just a code job report control that gets added now what can happen 
and catch is used out is historically they would have been on their global properties I'll just wait for it to catch up can you see the global properties not yet we're still in your text pad at the moment ah, it's just coming now I think Yes, we can see global properties now, Andy. Right, let me put the audience view on because that is quite slow, yeah. Okay, now one thing which can catch people out is on the manifest, this linked link generated uh, manifest into project. Basically, sometimes, after, especially after you say you've changed a version or whatever, it can still compile in your old manifest. I've definitely seen that in the early 9.1s, just worked there but 100% I've seen it where it doesn't as well. So what you end up with is um, an old manifest for your application being compiled into your, uh, being compiled in. So your old manifest, sorry, let me just bring up the text pad. Okay, your old manifest would have been something along the lines of that before setting it to use Reg free com that would have stopped it working because um, it's never going to initialize the, the, the OCX because it doesn't know that there's a dependency manifest waiting to be used. Um, so that was a, a common problem. Not sure why now, if, it's a, if it is or it isn't, but that's definitely caught people out in the past. So a quick tip there would be, if you've just changed your version um, and Kojok, you know, I think Pete, from memory that he might have done would be to just unlink it generate see that the new manifest is there correct with the correct version and so on which would be if we just jump back to that and your application manifest would show it's 1730 as well as well as the actual code jot content uh, just make sure all the versions match that's a golden rule so on your application just unlink it let it generate it, check it, make sure it's right, and then you can link it back in again and you'll be good to go. So that's definitely caught people uh, people out in the past. Um, so that's definitely a, a, a tip to note down. So Pete's unfortunately not back. So I presume uh, hopefully that will help. If not, uh, we'll pick it up on the, um, on the Skype chat. Uh, as we do with uh, with other things as well. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are aware, obviously, looking at some of the names, I know you're definitely aware we've got a Skype chat, but if uh, if you aren't, but feel free to join it. Uh, it's Skype and it's a group called, let's bring it into focus. Let's bring it in for the audience view and we can see here there's today I was running a little late so I put a post up with the Kojok Niantis discussion group okay um, we started late but we've finished late so I suppose that's all fair uh, I think we are more or less done Andy, did you see that David posted where that report control example is that I did? It was on February 13th, 2017. February 13th? That's four months ago. Wow. That was a while, huh? Oh, my days. Don't, time flies when you're having fun. I thought it was, even when I said two months, I was wondering whether it was that far. You know, yeah, it's quite a while. I think we're up to um, 70, 70 odd user group meetings now with the Niantis ones, um, including the the bi-monthly ones. I mean, we, it's quite a switch when we, we move from bi-monthly to weekly. <laughs> but um, yeah, 70 on, it's, it's going good. Attendance is, okay. uh, although some people have left now, but attendances are going up. We're definitely getting the uh, recordings watched as well because I get feedback on them all the time. So yeah, um, progress. Hopefully everyone's happy. Yeah. I'm happy. I had a, a quick suggestion, though. Oh, fire away, yes. It's it's easy. Um, when the webinar started, I think we we're looking, I can't remember whose screen it was, but you go, be careful not to show your license. So I'm thinking, what if you wrap that license in a button so that you went to the tab for license, but then you had to click a button to actually see the license information? 
Yeah, that would be a lot easier for everybody as well. Yeah, just, just to pop them that way. Yeah, exactly. So you, you could go to the tab and you wouldn't expose your information. It seems like it happens from time to time and that would just totally prevent it. Click a um, button. It, it does, yeah. In fact, um, I still haven't uploaded last week's webinar because um, uh, I went to install the co new code jock. You remember towards the end with version 18, I went to install the uh, new code jock. Um, I had it on the second monitor and then brought it back into uh, interview to put my code jock license in, <laughs> which I can't believe I did. So I haven't edited that out yet. So I just need to um, c cut that tiny bit out before uploading it. Um, I'm all for sharing, but not the code jot license. <laughs> <laughs> not the licenses. So, although it's only a license for the uh, the beta installer, so I mean, you still shouldn't divulge it, but it wouldn't be the end of the world either. So, well, we didn't get to do any on the uh, the the multi DLL template this week, only because we had a, a couple of questions. So um, we will start next week. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. Okay, um, if that's if that's everything, we'll she'll start um, start wrapping it up. Andy, I'd be interested in that thing that you mentioned about video editing. But if you want to do that separately, then uh, I can contact you by Skype about that. Yeah, well, basically, it's um, uh, I don't know if you've seen our um, G Media. We've got a product which is um, it's a, it's. A slightly different approach to some of our uh, some of our others. Just let me bring the user group into focus. So let me just put that over there. Um, close that one. Uh, can't find it. There we go. So basically, uh, we do some other wrappers. We do the cold drop wrappers, of course, and they are one for one. So the Calendar Pro wraps a Calendar Pro, the Docking Pane wraps a Docking Pane, and do, you know, one for one. Uh, you get the idea. We also do some other wrappers. We do a PDF wrapper. We do a G Media. Now the idea behind these are uh, they are media controls. So if I just quickly knock, uh, I'm not sure we've got licenses on this one. We'll have a look. Um, the idea behind it is you get the wrapper template, but then at the global level, and of course, I think you can override it at the local level, I think, you can say what engine you're using. The beauty of that is you've got one common class interface. So you can say, okay, I want to open a media file. So you call class.openfile, and there's window controls, take, take all that as read. But you've got the class method of open file that opens a the file. Then you've got a class method of play and stop, forward, rewind that type of thing. What it, how it talks to the back end is the class's problem, not your problem. So it lets you switch the runtime engine of the, uh, the player and the PDF wrapper does the same for the PDF. It lets you change the engine at runtime to whatever your user wants. Of course, it's as long as we support it, <laughs> um, but it gives them basically options. That's the idea. So we, we already cover a few uh, Windows Media Player uh, is there a demo, I think? There's a demo of some horses, is there? Yeah, I see you did the Viscom ones. Okay. Yeah. I know those ones. Yeah. So we've got um, we've got that. Of course, you can cover the others. Um, I think, John, you originally started... I think you've done a, a wrapper for one of these, didn't you? If I remember rightly. I don't know if it's a full-blown wrapper, but you've definitely done something with video editing. Um... I'm not sure it was video. Oh, maybe video capex. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think it was a while ago. So basically, we have these. Now we do the Viscom player. I use it in, in uh, one of my uh, display. I have a display manager program uh, for multi-screen mm -hmm. advertising. Um, so basically, we use a combination of the Windows Media uh, and the Viscom. Now I think it was Viscom. If I have a look, uh, cast my mind back to the, the video edit. Yeah, they do. And the timeline. Yeah, and they do video, video edits. Yeah, they've just sent yeah. us an offer on it just of late. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was Movie Maker Timeline Control version 2. Movie Maker. Okay. Yes. So, yes. 
just have a that's quick. the one that's got eight timeline controls on isn't it uh if we just bring that into into show there's their website the yes basically you can see that's their video video edit control okay still not seeing your screen yet no oh because there because my audience view actually shows it as viewing now i'm, I'm seeing it by the way i think it's just a few people that have trouble. ah right okay yeah but that'll put the audience yeah, view on because this one, Andy. yeah yep. so basically the idea is for the uh the g media because i don't want it to be just playback there's a, the video capex which um needs to be added to it because we already do mm -hmm. some of the other uh some of their other controls for playback and of course the we already do some of the viscom so it stands naturally that we add this to it as well um, so you can do the editing right yeah what sort of controls have you got over the text that goes on there on this in terms of animate oh, yeah don't know at the moment don't know it's okay. whatever it supports if, you know, if, if it supports which let's face it it definitely looks like um, it definitely looks like it does do um, as long as it supports it then I'll give you the in fact yes we can have a look here this is sample text once, and in this, this is a screenshot of their uh, their test app. Uh, yes. yeah. I, I've looked at this several times, and uh, it always sort of seems that the, the actual text overlays are very, very simple that they provide, and there's not much in terms of text animation and things like that. Right. But ultimately, but I'd, love, I'd love to be proved wrong about that and find that there was actually ways to animate the text and uh, manipulate the text. We're going to be down to uh, as a bit like uh, Alejandro wanting to change the just one, one rose group colour before we're going to be at their mercy, so to speak. Yes, yes. So, but obviously we mentioned timeline before, and I know you've got a usage where you might potentially it's, it's, use it's with video. Yeah, um, it, it's actually for something along the lines of this, and this this control here, this timeline control, I've actually looked quite closely at it several times. Uh, thinking that might do what I want to do, but it, it just doesn't seem to go quite far enough for what I want. I, I need to be able to animate all the text that's there, uh, manipulate it so that you can uh, sort of make it bounce and do all sorts of things like that. Right. Um, I'd say it's going to come down to uh, the capability of the physical control. Yeah. But if, if you find one yeah. and it's got a comment face, happy to add it to the G Media. Um, the more the merrier, you know. And then it's mm -hmm. then you've got the uh, the nice, simple one-off approach, uh, which which I do like. Um, to be fair. Well, I'm actually almost decided on going in a completely different direction and using javascript things to to do something and this is why i've been asking you about this particular using the track uh, bar mm -hmm. uh, control to, to do something like that yeah well i mean i like the track i use it um as i say i use it with a calendar uh, from a scheduling point of view the power of the calendar mm -hmm. and then tied with a, a track bar um is, is pretty is pretty powerful the users love it. I'm not just saying that, they really genuinely do like it. The, they have another control called Movie Edit Gold, which I think is now at version 13, which I think gives you more control than this particular one here. And that together with your track bar uh, from Code Jock might make a very, very good combination together. Video edit, you say? Video edit? Video edit pro, I think it's called. Video edit pro gold. I wonder if it's just. If you go to where it says products and then click on video edit. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's it. It's one of those. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, just, what, yeah, that's what I was on. But the, the one that says gold. I think it's one of those yellowy gold colored ones. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, version 13. Yeah, I see. That's it, that's the one, yes. That approaches it from a slightly different point of view. You don't get the timelines that you do on the timeline edit control, but it actually seems to have a lot more power in terms of the video editing and video control. Right, okay, okay. But I'm only taking that from looking at the actual screenshots and 
what information they've got on the screenshots. It's well, not from actually using it or anything like that. I can always take a, a look. They're pretty good at their uh, giving you trial versions of the um, of the controls, so we can always crack it open. Uh, drop oh. drop me a line sometime. I'm a little busy this week, but drop me a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, download no, the, uh, we'll download the control and just have a look at the, the properties. We'll open it in uh, IEEE, which we use for the cold shock stuff, or just COM, actually. We'll open it in that, and we'll just take a quick look at what properties... Um, uh, to see what we can what we can do with it. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's tie it up. Um, without further ado, if everyone's okay with that, and I shall see you all next week. Great. Thanks very much for your help, Andy. I've appreciated it today again. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Uh, Bye, everybody. Yep. Okie dokie. Cheers, guys. See you later.